in this example I want to use code uh, written by this author um, to develop a complex MIG layout um, to see the steps he may have taken when he's considering it and how to build it. Um, this is the overall GUI here. Um, what we could or should do possibly at the start is to superimpose a grid on this so that we get some sense of where everything is. So in my mind I'm gridding it up before I actually uh, go to attempt to build it with make layout. Um, so I see it as here, I see it as column 1, column 2 and column 3 and then I see a number of rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this, um, I, the overall view for the whole GUI is three columns by five rows, effectively. But we could also zoom in on certain elements and say, well, do you know what? This is also a GUI element all by itself, as is this one and this one and so on. And this GUI element could be simply a J panel, as could this, as could this. So we could have a J panel for the background and a J panel for each of these separate GUI elements. That was a big picture. Let's look at those individual pieces. Um, this one here, if you consider this could be a J panel, you could see it as, a, as simply two columns with um, seven rows inside in it. So um, we could go about building that would make layout as well. So overall what we're going to do is use MIG layout to build, to manage the whole thing eventually when we have the parts put together so we'll see a J panel, a J panel, a J panel, so on all the way to the bottom and we'll use MIG layout to do all that big picture stuff. We'll also use MIG layout here for another separate J panel that just manages this one section and another MIG layout for just this one section and so on, all of these. So there, one, two, three, each of those is managed by a MIG layout manager as well. So we have, a, we have an abundance of MIG layout managers in this. So the big picture. Um, I'm going to pretend I zoomed out here and I just see an overview. So I'm going to describe here a MIG layout manager that will give me this effect. So I see three columns, five rows. So here I'm doing it in the constructor for MIG layout. I'm telling it, in general, it should wrap do three components and then go to the next line and then three components, next line, that's what the wrap three is. So I'm specifying here in the columns part of the constructor, so this is the general MIG layout constructor that specifies the columns, we see three columns. The center column is told it can grow, or has permission to grow. Not that it should or will, but it just says permission. Um, this one here has five rows, so or five rows down here, and three of them have been given permission to grow if they so request or wish to do. So that, that specifies the overall look of the system. If we look at this one here in the top left hand corner, I see two columns, like I said earlier, and a number of rows. And we'll give this a unique layout manager just by itself and for itself. And here's the breakdown of it here. It says new MIG layout manager for this section by itself, which is a J panel and it's going to wrap on two. So basically insert two elements by default and then move to the next line. Two elements by default, move to the next line and so on. Um, two columns, but obviously you can override that then locally. But And so I see two columns, column one, column two. And again, that can be overridden locally, but in general statement. So in the first instance there, client ID is added and it's aligned to the right. All of these are aligned to the right. And then we have another J label on the far side of it, which is inserted here, and it's left aligned by default. So these look neat. And again, for the name and John Smith and phone and all the way down. And we move down through those. And there's nothing, all we're doing there is using the MIG layout constraint that this should be aligned on the right. Um, and again on the right. So that, that's fairly straightforward. And it's just, a, as a side note, Wrapping on two there is just a convenience, so you don't have to say wrap, wrap, wrap on each individual when, after every second one when you add them here. And uh, this is just to make it look nice. If we look at the second one then, you could possibly see this as maybe three columns. And if you look at one of them, maybe say consider one is left, center and right. And again, you can start to say, well, you could have a J panel for that, or a J panel for this, and a J panel for that, but it's simpler than that, really. It's one J panel, and I see one item, two items, three items, wrap, 
one item, two item, and then a wrap. One item, two item, and then a wrap. And so we see some stuff seeming to stretch across one or two columns. Meg refers to that as a span, where something goes from over one cell to another cell. So um, we'll see here that the general sense of this is that you wrap on every third item by default, and you have two columns, uh, or sorry, three columns, and it doesn't mention anything about rows, so we have three columns and we have a gap of 16 pixels between this one and that one. And the middle center one here has been given permission. If so, if a if a component further on requests it, it can they can grow. So the general permission is there. So uh, we add in the components um, here. We say the buyer should be, well, say for the buyer, it should be on the right. So it look, makes it look neat. So you're saying, you know, align that on the right. And the Walmart field here, it's spanning. Now, span means it's going to stretch itself over a number of columns. We haven't said how many, so by default it's however many it can get. It could be a million if it was there. Um, and you could say span two if you wanted to be exact. You could say span with space number two and then have a comma and go grow X. So this one can span and then not only can he span isn't enough in a way, he also has to grow to fill that space in. So we're giving him permission to fill that space in. Same with this the other ones, these three other ones. This guy then is slightly different in that he's a label and then he's a JTEX field and then he's a button at the end. And if we look at that one, his credit rating here, he's aligned on the right like the rest. The second guy gets his grow X but now we have a third button, or third element in there. It's a button, so it takes up some of the space. And again, if you pull it this way, it's this guy that's going to expand because he's the only one who requests to grow in the X direction in particular. And he's approval to do a, a, an actual grow because we have it up here in the this at this range. Now, you could do it differently, but this is just one way of doing it. And then we have this approved by Tony Soprano. Okay. Um, again... This one has got its own breakdown too. I see it as two columns, and we see it here as one row with kind of a specification of the gap sizes.